So everyone, I'm having a great time using one of Ableton Live 12's new instruments and this one is called Meld. And what we've got here are some chords and I've got Meld in its natural state with no presets. This is how it sounds at the moment. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to show you very quickly how it works and I'm gonna be very quick. So basically the way it works is you have these two oscillators and these oscillators are playing together at the same time. So if you switch B off, you'll only hear A. If you switch A off, you'll hear nothing. But if you hear B, you'll hear that. And it starts off with these different sounds, which are the most basic ones called basic shapes. And then you've got all of these others to choose from. So say for example, we choose square fifth. And then what you can do is you can mess around or you can change how those sounds basically work using some prefabricated, I guess, sound design tools. So for example, with square fifth, you've got fifth amount and P width, right? This is the pulse width. So you would just change the fifth amount to be lower and increase the pulse width. So everything you have here in this engine, you can then modulate using this cool mod matrix. So whatever you click, it will just show you, so it says oscillator macro one, it will show you there what it is. So for example, we've just clicked pulse width. So we're going to oscillate that using LFO two. So let's just increase that. And the LFO here is set here. So this is LFO two, and we can make it faster or slower as we want. And you know, that gives you kind of this sort of lush soundscape type of sound that you want, especially if you're using uh, pads and that type of ethereal type of effect. So it can really work well for that. And you can choose the different types of shapes. So that's LFO one, LFO, sorry, that's LFO two. LFO one is a little bit more complicated, but we'll go through that in a sec. So the other thing is when you choose these sounds, you can not only change what happens with the engine, you can also mess around and change the sound with the filters. So let's just take a listen to that. Once again, because you clicked on filter, it'll appear on the mod matrix. So you can oscillate or you can do all sorts of stuff with that. There's loads of filters to choose from. A lot more than what I'm used to seeing with Ableton. But uh, for example, Val is a really cool one. And there's a few other really nice looking ones as well. So for example, you've got Phaser. And once again, you can really mess around with the phaser settings and automate that. And um, then you've got other sort of settings there, feedback, spread. We're not going to go through those. They're pretty self-explanatory. What's really cool is the spread function that just gives you kind of this detuned wide sound. So that's pretty cool. And then you've got stack, which is very CPU intensive, but we'll listen to it with, no, with stack off and add the stack kind of does this triple layering thing, which is very cool on certain sounds. Sometimes it's a bit too much. You've got drive control and obviously you've got volume. Then you've got use current scale as a thing called scale degrees, which we have gone through in previous videos, but basically it keeps the sound settings and the movements within scale, which is super cool. You got a limiter, which I've not really used very much, because I'm not sure why you'd use a limiter. I think maybe for highly distorted sounds, you'd use a limiter. And the other thing I wanted to show you was every time you change anything in instrument A, it obviously happens within here. But if you want to change something in instrument B, you've got to click on the instrument B um, tab and you'll get the same options so you have this kind of dual multi-layered -layered double oscillator um, tool, which is super powerful. So the other thing I wanted to show you is when you select different instruments, so for example, say we select Fold FM, you'll notice here that the engines change. You get just different preset options. Anyway, so if I like some of these settings, say for example, I wanna do a pan on LFO2. I like that. I can copy that to B. So P, B will have the same settings. And you get some really interesting results. Some of them are unpredictable. But with B, we can do the same thing. We can change the engine settings. 
I think that's just a bit too much. So I'm going to just double click that and remove the pan and remove this oscillator. Let's increase that stack to two and the spread. We can reduce the amount of sounds here. So we've got two, three. We can go all the way to 12. So I'm going to kill my my CPU. But there you go. This is a very quick run through of how Meld works. And you can get some really interesting sounds. And the reason I know that isn't just because I've seen other people use Ableton Meld on the internet, but simply because if you just go through and listen to some of these amazing presets. You'll notice that the thing that's really in common with all of the sounds is this kind of moving soundscape. And that's what's really powerful about Mel. So did you guys like this? Do you think it's a cool little instrument? I think it's a fantastic addition to Ableton's arsenal of instruments. What do you guys think? Do you have any questions? Please do not be afraid to comment. I will help as much as I can.